Hello and welcome to theCUBE and this CUBE conversation focused on Infinidat's latest announcements about the Infinibox and the SSA platform. I'm Rob Streche, Managing Analyst with the CUBE Research. And today I'm very excited to be joined by long-term friend and real big friend of the CUBE, probably you know, prolific amount of times you've been on over the years. I have Eric Herzog is on, who's the CMO of Infinidat. Thanks for coming on. Rob, well, thank you very much. We love being on theCUBE, and uh, you guys do a great job of informing the industry and informing the end users and the channel partners of what's going on. So you guys have an incredibly valuable service that you deliver to everybody. Well, well I, I appreciate that. I, I think, let's jump into it, because I, I'm, I really love what you guys announced just a month back here. Uh, with the SSA platform, what you're doing with Infinibox, all of that. So what, what was announced? So we did sort of a three-part announcement. The first was our SSA Express software. So we have both an all-flash array that's very large, and we have an all-hybrid array, which has both flash in it, DRAM cache, and mostly hard drives, of course. So we've done develop a software technology that allows you to assign certain workloads and applications to only come out of our flash layer. So all of our hybrids have flash in them, but they have mostly hard drives. So you could take three, four, five applications, this Oracle workload, this SAP workload, this Mongo, and you could tell it on a hybrid array, make sure those workloads either come out of our DRAM cache, which is our neural cache, which is what gives us our incredible speed, whether it be in the all flash or in the hybrid. So it either comes out of the DRAM cache or it will only come out of the flash. So it behaves, although it's a hybrid array, those five, six workloads that are assigned into the SSA Express layer perform exactly like our high-end all flash array, which is 35 mics of latency or better, you know, 95% or better coming out of the DRAM cache. So it behaves like it's an all flash array. Think of it as akin to having a up to 320 terabyte all flash array embedded inside of a hybrid. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that this would give you you know, a really great price performance because I think when you start to look at it, you know, not every application needs that kind of performance, but people like it to have that performance. So you can go and embed that in there and pin some applications that really do truly need that. And that would make sense, especially with the new applications that are being built, microservice-based applications that need that kind of low latency. Well, the a couple of advantages are, first of all, the software is free, yeah. so we don't charge for it. Secondly, it works with 95% of our installed base. Now, with some of the installed base, you might need to buy a flash upgrade kit because the older models didn't have as much flash as the newer hybrid models do. So you might have to buy some, but that's it. And obviously, all the newer models last couple of years, you don't have to buy anything. And by the way, even on the older models, you may not have to. So think about this. I've got a three-year-old Infinibox, and I create a 320 terabyte all flash array inside of it for free. Now, why would I care? Well, aside from the actual performance angle, is as many analysts have noted, um, with a lot of the other uh, array technology, we don't slow down. There's one other vendor that doesn't slow down, but usually as you fill an all-flash array, you slow it down. So for the highest performing workloads, you get a small all-flash array, and you put one or two, or one or two, or one or two. And the next time you have, what you see when you look at your data center, you have small all-flash array proliferation, you got them everywhere, and they're only running one or two workloads. So in this case, you get rid of that, which saves you on watts, slots, power, floor space, give you a greener IT configuration, and guess what? You're not managing six little arrays, you're managing one big array. And with our autonomous automation, as uh, you've seen from our public references, they talk about how they run themselves for three or four years, they never have to touch it. So you get that advantage versus having this all-flash array sprawl. Now, by the way, when you really need it, we have our all-flash array SSA2, which was the second angle of our launch of what we did in that platform as well. Yeah, and I, I think this is where, again, scale and being able to scale is really important to a lot of people. As they consolidate down, they want to be able to scale out as they can spend more. I mean, we've seen, you know, again, with IT spending being what it is, you know, people want to be able to reuse their investment. So, A, the free software and being getting an all-flash array for free with an OS upgrade is pretty impressive. I, I think that really is one of the things that can lead people down this path, but then you're talking about the scale aspect of it too. What was that second part? 
So what we also did is in our all flash array platform, our Infinibox SSA2, which is our second generation, we have doubled the capacity. Now we did the same thing last year on our hybrid array, the regular Infinibox. So this year we doubled the capacity on our all flash array, which means you're up to 6.6 .6 petabytes of effective. So why do you care? First of all, because we don't slow down, you could load the thing up with 80 apps, 90 apps, 100 apps, because we just, we don't slow down because we derive most of it out of our multi-patented neural cache, which runs out, of course, the DRAM. So you can fill that array to four petabytes or five petabytes, benchmark it against when the array has literally 100 terabytes, and it's the same exact performance, 35 mics of latency or better. So that consolidation allows you to A, get a greener data center, B, it allows you to dramatically cut CapEx and OpEx, it allows you to essentially free up that money to spend it on AI or other things. Remember, I've been doing storage for a long time. I'm almost 70 years old, and trust me, I have never met a CIO who used to be a storage admin. Maybe there are one or two, but I've never met one, and I've met with at least 1,000 CIOs. I've been doing this so long. So CIOs know they need storage, but quite honestly, they hate it. So if you can give them a path to dramatically improve the environmentals, to cut CapEx and OpEx and basically take budget that they were gonna spend on storage and move it to the hottest thing, which right now would be AI or cybersecurity, you're like a freaking hero. And we can do that now by doubling the capacity. We have, for example, a real customer in the Fortune 50 and they bought the All Flash a couple of years ago and we had basically half the capacity and they've got 35 of them, okay? Well, if we had the bigger model, which we do today, guess what, they'd have half of that. So they have, they'd have 18 because they got 35. Well, think of all the watt slots, power floor space, and operational management you are saving if you go from 35 arrays down to 18 or 40 to 20 or 50 to 25. And we did that just because of the bigger capacity. We're not even talking consolidation of other arrays. We have one customer and they consolidated 24 arrays from three different vendors onto four infinite boxes. Wow. So talk about how much easier that is to manage. And then quite honestly, think about the long-term ecological effect. Yeah. So as you know, all compute devices are filled with toxins, all of us. And it is what it is, right? We all wanna have our iPhone. We all wanna have our mainframe. We all wanna have our enterprise storage. We all wanna have our networking. So all of that gets recycled and it's expensive because of the toxins. It's not like recycling your newspaper or recycling your, your cans. So the problem is, if you've got 24 of them, you go to four, you still have to recycle the 24. But on the next pass, when you go to the Infinibox SSA fourth generation, for sake of argument, you're only recycling four arrays. So A, that's more ecological, but it's also more economical. I call it E squared, ecology and economy at the same time. E squared, that's go. what we deliver, and that double capacity helps you do that. Yeah, I like that. I, I, I think, again, it's part of it. How do you do more with less, right? Less power, less cooling, less space. All of that makes a lot of sense, especially it also helps with administration. I mean, again, I think, you know, more consolidation that you can have. And to your point, people are looking at Gen AI and other AI and ML and bringing so much more data and data growth. And I, I think being able to manage it all in one place and not having it spread out all over the you know different multiple arrays becomes a really huge advantage for those customers absolutely now the second part of the all flash is we introduced a scale up architecture so historically you had to buy an array fully populated so now what we've done is come up with a strategy we can scale up so instead of being 100 percent populated you could get 60 or 80 and then as you need more you buy more and we do it in 20 percent increments so if i have a 60 so let's say wikibon Silicon Angle, the yeah. cube, you know, your three companies decides we're getting an Infinibox SSA2, but we only need 60% of the capacity. So you buy 60%. Now you guys do so much work and all the video and all the stuff you guys do. Maybe you say, okay, six months from now, you say Zoggin store, we need more. Yeah. Okay. Guess what? We sell it to you six months from now or a year from now. We don't sell it to you up front. So now we have a 60% populated that can scale up and 80% populated to scale up, and you can still buy the 100% populated if that's what you need. But that scale up architecture gives you flexibility in how you manage your budget. You still can consolidate, 
It still has, of course, our cyber resiliency with our award-winning InfiniSafe technology to help you recover from a, a cyber attack. Well, I was going to get at that because okay, it is great. Cyber Security Month. So I yes. mean, so great. that that they don't have to go and relicense that or no. anything like that. That comes with it as part of it. So part of what we've always done at the company is the software, which is really our magic fairy dust. We don't do any custom hardware, unlike, and I came from IBM and EMC as a senior exec, and there's all kinds of custom stuff they do in hardware. We don't do anything. We use off-the-shelf servers to run as array controllers. We don't even have array controllers. We just run our operating system in regular servers. We get JBODs and JBOFs to have the shelving, and that's it. So our magic is all in the software. So that's our Infuse OS operating system. We have a cloud edition now, which allows you to have hybrid cloud technology, move data back and forth. But that Infuse OS architecture, whether it be our AI ops product, InfiniOps, Infiniverse, which monitors the arrays and does proactive, by the way, tech support for us. It, we have public references that say, they called me and told me they had a problem with the power supply before I ever even knew there was a problem with the power supply. But that's our AI ops technology, our Infiniverse. And our InfiniSafe, the cyber technology, also comes included at no charge. And by the way, we guarantee the cyber. We guarantee, A, the snapshot is in fact truly immutable. We will guarantee that in writing. We also guarantee the recovery time. And we do that on both our InfiniBox platforms, both the hybrid and also the SSA all flash, but also our InfiniGuard purpose-built backup, which by the way, has an embedded InfiniBox inside of it. So the same operating system runs on everything. The cyber is guaranteed on everything. And the recovery times are incredible. So for example, we did an end user demand generation. And because I'm crazy, as all of the guys at Wikibon, the Silicon Angle, the Cube, now I'm a crazy guy, we don't pre-record anything. Now, after the fact, yes, but not during. So we have done six, probably eight actually, cyber resilience webinars, and we do recoveries live, live. So we recovered 20 on our InfiniGuard, 20 petabytes, 20 petabytes, not gigabytes, yeah. not terabytes, 20 petabytes of Veeam backup repository in 11 minutes and 55 seconds. The Veeam guys can't believe it. It's like, what? <laughs> and so the Veeam CTO actually had me on a webinar last week with him talking about their stuff um, and our stuff working together. On the InfiniBox platforms, whether it be the hybrid or the all flash, we guarantee recovery in under one minute. Wow. And we started doing that last year. Coincidentally, one of my former employers, which I'll leave nameless, they actually just announced it three weeks ago, a year after Infinite had announced it. And only two companies have a guarantee of RTO, basically, on primary storage, us and this other vendor. And of course, they copied us uh, basically 14 months after we already had announced it. So during that demo- well, it takes a while for hardware, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so during that demo, we did, of course, the backup first with Veeam, but that could have been Commvault or Veritas, IBM Protect, doesn't matter. Okay, any backup vendor, we work with everybody. Um, and then we did it on primary. We recovered 175,000 video files, 200 terabytes in four seconds, I kid you not. Four <laughs> seconds. So we, and we guarantee all that in writing. So under a minute, on primary storage, whether it be the InfiniBox or the InfiniBox SSA, under a minute guaranteed, and in the secondary storage, backup if you will, on the InfiniGuard, under 20 minutes. However, when you talk to the backup guys, someone with 10 or 20, pedo, they can't get anywhere, I mean, they're talking recovery times on their side, like days, and we are doing it in 11 minutes and, you know, under 20. So 11 minutes, 55 seconds, we've done the demo a bunch of times. The worst case in the live demo, was 12 minutes and 50 seconds. So between 11.55 and, and 12, and we've done it like eight times, and it always comes out to be the same, and it doesn't matter whether it's an InfiniBox, InfiniGuard, by the way, a lot of people use the InfiniBox for a secondary um, backup repository as well. So the InfiniGuard gives you that data reduction technology, but the InfiniBox hybrid is often used because they want to use the data reduction that comes from the backup software vendor, and we don't care. It's not as fast and it's not as efficient as when we do it on our side, but some people just say, no, 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 I, I've got an InfiniBox, I, let me just buy one another one, or let me take buy a new one and take the old one. 
and turn it that. into a backup target device because it's older and slower than the newer ones. And we do, we'll let them do that as well. So a lot of different ways to skin the cat with Infinidat, but it's all built around application workloads and use cases. And yes, we can talk bits and bytes about latency, IOPS, and bandwidth, and iSCSI this, and QDEP that. And you know what? While the storage admin really cares about that, we can certainly talk storage geek and nerd with them. I can even talk to them about TPI and BPI, which most people don't even know what that means anymore. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and that's great. But when you start getting to the VPs, even if they're infrastructure centric, and absolutely the CIO or the CISO, they don't care about any of that stuff. No, they want to know what's the SLA. They're looking for the SLA. They're looking for what applications, how can they guarantee that that application is going to be performant for that, especially as those applications scale and as they grow. And a lot of times, especially with these cloud native applications, they don't even understand how the performance is going to go over time. And I would assume that the software that you package in there with the AI ops type, the Infina ops, helps them understand what are the workloads of all right. these different applications right. as well. well. And we, when we, we, do a hundred, we do a performance guarantee on the two InfiniBoxes. Now on the InfiniBox hybrid, if you run the same workload and then you do it on the SSA, the SSA is going to have a better performance guarantee. So we do that, so we have performance guarantees on primary storage. We have 100% availability guarantees on primary storage. And we have, if you will, the two cyber ones, one on resiliency, AKA immutability, and the other one re on recoverability in you know how fast we'll recover. And we put all that stuff in writing. As we publicly announced, we do 25% 20, of the Fortune 50 use our stuff. And we're way smaller than uh, my former employers or the other people, but we're scrappy, we're tough, and we've got the largest enterprises in the world buying our technology. Yeah, why, do you, why do you think that is? Is it because of the guarantees? Is it the fact that it just performs and it's easier to manage? What, what do you think is the... So, in addition to those which are pretty straightforward, right, we do have more SLAs than most of the other vendors. They're better, I mean, clearly all the cyber stuff is way better than everybody's. Um, most people, only one or two other vendors will guarantee 100% availability. They've got seven or eight nines, but if you want 100% available, one of them in particular, you you can get a guarantee, but you have to buy some extra software to do it yeah. and some consulting services. So for us, it's just embedded. You just get it. And But I do think one of the, the key things to our magic fairy dust is also our incredible um, support and service infrastructure, our white glove. Uh, we include a technical advisor who's not tech support. So we have regular tech support. First of all, we provide level three. There is no level one and level two tech support. You go right to level three because they're large global enterprises, they're cloud service writers, they're telco, they're financial institutions, they're major university hospitals, that's who we sell to. So there is no level one or level two, let me go through that thing. Like if you are, I call Microsoft, not that I don't love Microsoft, because I do, I use all Microsoft apps, but we get level one, then level two, then level three. That's standard, right? We don't do that, you go right to level three. So that's our tech support. Technical advisor's job is to optimize for application workload and use case. That's what they do. So if there's a tech support problem, do they know about it? Yes, but that's not their job. We had got a whole tech support team to do that. So that white glove support and service, and again, the autonomous automation, the fact that we have multiple public references, probably 50, that say, we haven't touched the thing for two years or three years. There's one that was done through another analyst firm, um, and theirs literally says, we haven't touched the thing for eight years. Yeah. And they happen to be a Fortune 100 account saying that. So that matters a lot to other end users. But, you know, that white glove support and service goes along with, if you will, the what I'll call the base technology that offers a solution. And then the white glove support and service is something. And by the way, some of the other companies do offer technical advisors, but they charge for it. We do not. So ours are just embedded in the cost. And it's just easy. We don't charge for all the software stuff. Do we have support mains? Yes. But when you, having worked at two of the other largest storage companies in the world, I can tell you, the typical invoice on a non-complex deal was three to five pages of row after row after row. When you get an invoice or our partners, you know, because obviously we sell a lot of our stuff through the channel partner community globally, it's four to five line items on the invoice versus 50, and I've actually seen some at my old companies, like 200 line items. Yeah. So, you know, we just do everything to make it easy, not just the technology, but Doing business is I mean, what it, we do. It's it, a business 
Think of it as a business strategy, not just a technology strategy. I was going to say that that must really endear you to those channel partners. And what has, what has their reaction been since the announcement of this? So it's been exceedingly positive, obviously, for the installed base. They want to go out there. And in some cases, they will sell a little flash, but not a lot. The main thing is they don't, uh, you know, they get complaints about the small array flash sprawl. So they sell, we don't have all small all flash arrays. So they'll sell one from a competitor. Then they got to sell another, another. And then the guys are complaining and say, wait, now we got to manage all this stuff. And by the way, it's taking up rack space and we have to power and cool it. Well, wait. And now they, so they can go that. And then uh, on the SSA two, it's all about how can they deliver better financial value by going to the end user and saying, oh, you've got 42 arrays. Well, guess what? What if I could take that to eight? Right. Okay. And, and deliver you 35 mics of latency, which is faster than anybody else in the industry. And, and compared to a couple of the guys that are way bigger than us, almost five times faster. Not to mention the real world performance, because to me, there's lies, damn lies, and benchmarks. <laughs> and so I'm, we actually encourage our end users to time it with a stopwatch. Literally run an Oracle workload, turn on the stopwatch, and then run it on same version of Oracle, same servers, all you do is swap the storage. And in fact, we have a public reference, which I just reviewed today, cloud service provider in the US. And in it, their CIO said, we saw a 15 times performance increase in real world. Now, remember, they're doing backup as a service, storage as a service, and infrastructure as a service. So for them, every time they got that, they're billing somebody. Right. So for them, it translates directly into revenue for them. If I'm a global enterprise, what it translates into is an SAP workload that takes five hours, taking 20 minutes. And that has real value um, when you look at it from an application workload perspective, if I'm in a global enterprise. In the CSP space, it's directly translated into immediate revenue because right. of how they charge, right? Yeah, keep the factory busy, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So, so where can people go to find out more about this? What should they do? Where should they go? So, first of all, um, your favorite reseller, if you'd like to do that, uh, www.infinitact.com. We, of course, are very active on Twitter. I can't say X yet. Yeah. I know I'm supposed to, but I'll say <laughs> Twitter slash X slash Twitter yeah. uh, and on LinkedIn. And, of course, you can always follow Zoggin Store. You can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm no longer Zoggin Stash, uh, you know, much to Dave's dismay. So yeah. Dave Valente, oh. the founder, uh, when I grew my mustache back, literally tweeted and put on LinkedIn, the Zoggin stash is back. back. Yeah. But I did shave that <laughs> off, so. Uh, yeah, well, I, you, you can tell I like the, I like the facial hair. So, I, you know, I, I and I did too most of my life, but the wife was complaining, yeah. so I had to shave it off. I, I get it the opposite. If I shave it off, she complains, so. <laughs> but hey, it's been great having you on. I really thank you for coming on and sharing this and really keeping us up to date with what's going on at Finidat. It's, you know, always good. Always good. To well, hear. thank you very much. And again, the cube is one of the most valuable resources in the industry. And I don't say that just from the vendor side. End users say they look at your stuff all the time. And that's what matters most. What do the end users do? And what do the channel partners do who take care of those end users? And they both comment to me multiple times on the value the cube delivers to them to really understanding technology, not just in storage, but in all the other areas. Because you guys cover the entire gamut. Well, we, we thank you for that. And we, we appreciate it. And you know, we thank you for watching and really appreciate you watching this. And remember, you know, for all things data and storage, feel free to visit silkenangle.com as well. And thank you for watching this episode with Infinidat and keep watching The Cube, the leader in high tech news and analysis. Thanks and stay tuned.